Chris, you look busy. That's right. So these are going to be our black cars. So they've been primed. I'm just going to give them the... You've got a base coat of black. No, a hot black coat. Job done. Job done. Got a job staying on. Right. And it's that way and you've got a circle all the way around. Okay. Take as many pictures as you want. Will it run a double header? No. No, that's fine. I thought well it will, but you, uh, you'll you have to run them separately. Okay. Unless you know how to consist. Um, I do on a, dip, on a different system, yes I do, but not on well, this you've one. you've got inertia on this. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. You've got sound? Yeah. Yeah, you've got a lot of inertia, so give yourself plenty of time to stop. So, where we are now, got the ballasted viaduct. I've put the rocks in or the ground effectively. Right. Um, I haven't put the walls in yet, we've not got that far. That's mouse food, just in case you wonder what it is. Um, so you can basically see the shape now. These are the roads, but I've at least got the banks in so I can get the grass on. Um, right. Because there's obviously a lot of grass, a lot of bushes. But the, the concentrating on, on will freelance the walls because obviously it, it, it's not prototypical, this piece. So. We're going to have to, there's some really interesting, quite interesting buildings. There's still a pillbox here. Right. Plus what I think, I think, although I don't know yet, would have been a public air raid shelter. They're still there, would you believe? Okay. So they make interesting bits and pieces. And they also give Phil some quite uh, interesting kits that he can sell. There's a rail that goes down the back there. But this effectively now, we could put the wings back on. Right. And I know that Dave, certainly in the next seven days, wants the wings back on, in other words, to make it back into a U. Right. As you can see, here's one end, look. There's one end which is now complete and glued. Right. And all the ballast is done. So that's... Ready for some grass and water. The droppers are, are in. Yeah, that's ready for the grass. I've started working on... Uh, let's get this get the track work out your way for a minute. The platform's come on, hasn't it? Let's just watch it you, 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 on that day. Yeah, got it. So I've, I've now finished the, the, the platforms at Bushy. They just need weathering and a little bit of work on, but they're ready again at the stage I wanted to get them into. Right. As you can see here, I'm starting to add 
the London Underground. That's just I've done that this morning, so that's that's definitely a hanging track there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, this will come off, of course. I'll, I'll, this will all be cut off like this here. Right. So it, you, you, the idea is you'll see it completely fade into oblivion. Right. Um, the tracks now all the way in to the fiddle side. Okay. All the way in. So um, all the ballasting is done. So effectively. We can now remove that end, and if you look over onto the Watford Junction layer, where you've got the grass, we can also take the last board off there. That will give Dave his U. Okay. So we can then put these U. That will become a model in itself, so we can finish that. And when Paul comes, and hopefully he'll be here Sunday, we'll grass all the rest. Right. So effectively, other than the London Underground, all the tracks now complete. Still got droppers to put on, and Pete's not here today. Um, but, you know, literally, we're at that stage now where we're concentrating on buildings. It's starting to look like a model railway, isn't it? It looks usable. Uh, yeah, I've started to add, as you can see over there, the, the, the catenary. Yes. Um, the catenary on this layer is a massive, massive, massive challenge because as we explained, I think, in the last video, we've gone past the 208 feet. Right. So, effectively, if you think about it in this way, we were building another 64 feet. Well, we've actually built two 64 feet now. Right. So, we, because we've come round the corner and gone past all the way up yeah. to reduce the size of the fiddle yard, we've gone three boards past that. We've gone another 24 feet. So effectively, we're building two layouts for this year in, and don't forget, it's got to be finished by April. And it's got to work first time. And it's got to work first time. And so you're looking at, just just on the overhead, you're looking at really quite complicated systems because only that bit, which is Watford Tunnel, can we use the Pico single masts on. Right. Once you come to the stations, they're all triple mass so it's a combination of then of four mass three mass two mass and I've noticed at Bushy yesterday when I went down on the train that there are some single mass but of the modern type not of the old type right so I'm considering what some of that to, to, to compromise and use some of the Pico single mass uh, which would be in keeping just purely because of the time scale. So it'll expedite the construction yeah. for the deadlines. Now, as if that's not complicated enough, we come over here, which is a real big problem, okay? And this may look simple, but funny enough, this is the most complicated part of the whole layout. Okay, why is it complicated? Because this is two track. Okay. So firstly, it's got to be a backboard there. Separating the two. Well, there's got to be a backboard here so you can get into this track. Right. Then there's got to be a backboard here that, that you can't see that track. So Dave and I have just decided this morning where that backboard is going down here. But the biggest problem I've got is it's lined up that end to fit Milton Keynes. I know it fits Milton Keynes because we did it as in your video. You saw us do it at, yeah. at um, Blakemere. What I can't do, and I haven't done, is yet married this end up. And the problem we can't, the answer's at the bottom there. Okay. So we've got to remove, all this has got to be moved out for us to get that bottom one. And there's not enough people here today to literally move all this lot. It is a big task. So Sunday when we're all together, if the weather's good, I pray it's good because this really is a problem board. Right. So I've got to get that lined up at that end to make this all work. Okay. So you can see the other end of, of, of Watford Tunnel is there, look, but mm -hmm. that doesn't fit on this layout. That fits on one over there. Right. So this is, again, all time permitting this. Yep. This, for the first time, is also something we've never done before. This is a housing estate. Okay, <laughs> that's new to me. Yeah, well, this is, this is, you know, this is, again, the ever-changing uh, things once you start going in to the detail we've gone into, 
suddenly realise on the top of that tunnel, which we didn't have on making tracks one, mm -hmm. because you're now making that part of something else, has to change. Right. This now has to become a housing estate, which is what's on top of Watford Tunnel. Right. So because Phil's if you don't do that, yeah. it doesn't look right. Because you've extended it by another 60 feet. Where are the houses coming from? They're all going to be made. So Phil will be yeah. laser cutting and Well, designing. luckily, yeah. it's a modern housing estate, so all, they're, they're all, all the houses similar. are exactly the same. Right. So they're exactly the same, and there'll only be about, what, five or six of them. Right. Um, and they'll be different colours. But that, again, is once Paul's... Once Dave's got this fitting today, I'll paint it, and then Paul can grasp that but we'll put the roads in I'll right. put the roads in mm. so that's relatively easy other than building the buildings but as I say none of that can happen until this piece fits here right because we have to work out how we come out of this this end not this tunnel particularly because this is Watford tunnel but the Killsby tunnel right we've got to come out and hide that because that goes on to here I quickly asked not this particular ball, but one like it. Right. So you've got your single ball coming out of Killsby Tunnel, which will actually be Stowe Tunnel. Right. Because you've missed the bit between Killsby mm. and Stowe. So you come out, that then has got to be hidden behind the backboard, which has to go across. So you can see it's a bit more complicated. Um, and we, we tend to sort of keep putting this bit of the layout off, but at some point... You've got to get on with it. We've got to get on with this, mm. yes. This is a little bit more complicated than we'd like to like it to have been, but, you know, Andy wanted this so he could have his stone train and his tampers and whatever, you know, you know what he's like, he loves yeah. his, his stuff. Uh, and that's there, and we've got some points here so he can play with his, um, his measurement trains and that. So it, it makes it a bit different. It makes, again, a bit of a scene in the middle of the railway. We, we tried to get the canal in, the, the, the canals, we've had to sacrifice the canal at Blissworth because we wanted uh, to use more on, on we, I wanted an extra board on, on Watford Junction, which originally we didn't plan for. Right. When I built the, when I built the platform, I realized actually I needed another eight foot right. to get up the end, so I had to pinch eight foot off Blissworth. It's so it's complexity's it, interest though isn't it as well it is it's and, it, and, and it's like you can sit down and you can plan it when you build it then you go this doesn't quite work because you can't really come out of a station and go around mm. a bend no and let's be honest it is a bend yes uh, i've got to put it further away to give us a more gradual you know sweep into it you're selling the illusion yeah selling the illusion <laughs> because what we've always done as you know right from day one i have never liked you to see the track go round curves right i like gentle curves i mm. love gentle curves yeah the courier see what I, yeah brilliant amazing um yeah so this will be the first time we've actually done a curve it's a big curve but it's still yeah. a curve um but we had no way of getting around that if we wanted to do what we wanted to do mm. um so we've, you know, by tech putting in the extra eight feet, mm -hmm. it makes the, the curve look less of a curve. Right, gives you a lot more leeway. Gives me to... a lot more leeway. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Richard, you're uh, you've come to visit uh, Pete's layout today. So uh, where have you come from, and uh, what are you hoping to achieve? Yeah, I'm from Footplate in Kidderminster. So we own uh, Fansway, which have developed the O gauge relative on snowplow, which is coming out later this year, and we're just giving them a bit of a shakedown really. Um, we've done extensive testing on other layouts but we've not been here yet so we're giving them a run today. Oh brilliant, well, let's have a look at them running. I just found Chris with his cars. More cars. These are silver, Chris, yeah? Correct, silver ones. So there's five of these out of the 60 that are silver. 
that look great. Hang on, let's get a focus on that. There we go. Very smart. How many to go? Uh, let me take this off. 4,692. Uh, so we're doing 60-ish altogether. Okay. Um, so just I'm painting painting them in the percentages of the colours that are in the UK. So it's about 20% black. Right. That sort of thing. So it, when they're on the layout in the car parks on the roads, it generally looks and feels like the UK colour percentages, I hope. Right. <laughs> that looks great, Chris. They do look good. Shiny. Yeah. Have you got to paint all the windows black now? Yeah, yeah. So it gets the painting is that is the hard part of doing the cars particularly the windows uh, so you've got to paint all the windows in you've got to paint the lights in you've got to paint the rear lights in then you've got to paint the wheels and the hubs and then put the number plates on so there's a lot of little things that take a bit of time to do with these it's far cheaper than buying if you could buy them um die cast cars right but part of our problem is you can't buy a lot of different sorts of modern cars modern era cars if you want a Land Rover, Range Rover a Mini, you're sorted. But anything else, it's it's harder. So that's why we 3D print them, and we can print one of these for pennies compared with six pounds for a, a diecast. But then you've got to do all the painting. So when you're ready. Okay, so we've got here the new live destination boards for making tracks for. Um, so if you remember we've got two new stations Watford Junction and Bushy and thanks to Russell at UK Departure Boards we now have two new departure boards for Watford Junction and Bushy so this is our existing large board for Milton Keynes uh, and these two are our smaller ones for the new stations and they are currently showing the live data so this is actually what's going on at Watford Junction and Bushy at the moment, and this is Milton Keynes. And we've uh, reconfigured them slightly with different colours. Uh, but now that we've got two extra stations, Watford Junction and Bushy, we've now got, thanks to Russell at UK Departure Boards, two more live departure boards. So these are showing the actual live information from Watford Junction and Bushy, and that one's showing Milton Keynes. And we'll have these next to the, the stations on the railway so that people can see the live information. But it doesn't end there with our destination boards. So we're also going to get four new model railway destination boards, which will show the destinations of our model trains as they go around the 208 feet. So that's a little bit more complicated. We're working on that, so you'll see that in the future. But for today, I thought it'd be interesting to see the new boards we slightly reconfigured them, that they're very configurable, these boards from Russell. And so we've changed the colouring on them to be white, mostly white and blue text. And that's going to differentiate them from our model trains, which are going to show in yellow text. Four volts in. Platform 3 for the 1500 London Overground service to London Euston. Calling out Watford High Street, Bushy, Carpenters Park, Hatch End, Headston Lane, Harrow and Wheelstone, Kenton, South Kenton, North Wembley, Wembley Central, Stonebridge Park, Harlesden, Wilsden Junction, Kensal Green, Queen's Park, Kilburn High Road, South Hampstead and London Euston. This train is formed of four coaches. Platform three for the 1500 London Overground service to London Euston. Okay. The next train to arrive at platform nine will be the 1502 West Midlands Trains service to London Euston. Calling at Harrow and Wheelstone and London Euston. This train is formed of eight coaches. Platform nine for the 1502 West Midlands Trains service to London Euston. Platform eight for the 1513 West Midlands Trains service to Trigg. Calling at Hemel Hempstead, Berkhamstead and Trigg. 
This train is formed of eight coaches. Platform 8 for the 1513 West Midlands trains. Service to Trick. Concrete paint. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So, what we've done is, or what I've done, I was impressed at Blakemere uh, with Anita. She's a psychiatrist. And she's been impressed with what we're doing. At the cathedral, obviously, we don't get the mail because it goes to the cathedral. Right. At Blakemere, we have got all the mail. Okay. And the amount of mail that we've had from people that are so kind to us has been amazing right and it's the mental health issue that's really come across right um people with other medical problems and it really started me thinking from day one at the cathedral it's it has been incredibly impressive of what making tracks has meant to people with difficulties and i thought there's so many issues out there and I've got in my own family I've got issues that I'm dealing with at the moment and I watched what Making Tracks 2 has done and I thought if I could understand this more mm. and I'm, you know, if I could find somebody who could work with us to understand more about the therapeutic aspects of model railways there could be something we could offer different. Um, so I, I met with Anita and Chris had met with Anita and we talked and so we're looking into the possibilities of what you can actually do with model railways. Right. Because I think there is a wider and bigger issue when it comes to clubs, age groups, bringing people into the hobby, mm -hmm. expanding the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, we need to look at it differently because we take for granted, you know, you've heard Anita talking about men in sheds, which is a, a, an ongoing um, thing that's, you know, been, been around for years. Well, we've had men in sheds for 60 years. Yeah. They're called model railway clubs. Yes, yes. And I've watched the model railway clubs over the last few years, so I won't mention who they are. Quickly, Aston, where it's not the Model Railway Club in London because they're the opposite. They're they're stopping members. They're deliberately stopping older members. Okay. Because they don't want young kids in. Well, at mm. the end, is you end up just closing down because you've got no young members. You've got no fresh blood. No. So, you know, you you may have heard earlier Dev going on about. Well, four of us are all safeguarders. We're all qualified safeguarders we have to be right to go into the cathedral to look after vulnerable people so we went through all that um, and it, to me it's common sense but then you add this to all these letters we're getting and so I mean honestly Dave the letters are, are overwhelming you think mm, can we help in a different way can we add more can we actually add more to what's being done than, than mm. we currently are Right. Can we demonstrate actually that this this is a way that more people should be getting involved with it and looking at it because we're not forcing this. This is natural. Yes. You know, this is natural. We're not saying to people, come along and we'll give you a chisel and you can carve a whatever or yeah. make a you know, make a stand for your your whatnot table. Mm -hmm. This is come in, participate. Do whatever you want. You can drive trains, you can make scenery, you can paint brushes, you can do the electrics. There's a million things to do, but you can come in and engage. Right. You can engage. So we this will is all show you. mental health, well-being. Yeah. I, I'm uh, very, at the moment, I'm very focused on uh, mental health issues and, and uh, well-being. And I know that David's expressed his opinion, which everybody does. People will always use some illnesses as excuses. Right. But I can assure you, when you see that mental illness the way I've seen it in the last three months, mm. you do not want to see it like that. Right. It's too much. Mm. And I don't understand it enough 
but you bring in people that understand it and then you can start to grip with it and you can see what you can do about it. So there's a benefit for people who would visit us who are challenged with their health, uh, mental state. Yeah. And there's also a benefit to us because we're learning to understand it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Right, got yes, it. Yes, it's a double-edged sword. It's mm. like, what can we give and what can we get? Right. So the more we learn about mental health issues, the more it helps us to understand what we can offer people who come and want to be entertained, you know. Adita, it's good to see you here for the first time. Mouthful of biscuits. <laughs> We're very informal. So um, how did you become involved in this project then? Well, uh, I work at Cheshire Falconry and Cheshire Outdoors. Um, I'm the resident psychologist there. So I'm, I'm interested in the people side of things. And um, I work a lot with people with mental health issues, with autism and so on, through, mainly through the birds. And um, uh, Pete um, brought making tracks to Blakemere, um, I think because through a conversation with Steve. Now, the Cheshire Falconry started because of Pete. And many years ago, I think it's about 30 years ago, um, Pete gave Steve uh, Birchall, who owns Cheshire Park, and gave him an owl, and that was the start of everything. Right. Then. So, um, so um, it, it, St Steve had this. Uh, oh, at Cheshire Outdoors, we had this amazing barn, right. and there was a discussion about bringing making tracks to them. So then um, uh, there was a report about the making tracks um, at Blakemere and that report included a little bit about the mental health and wellbeing um, right. aspects of it. So I had a look at that and then I said to Chris that I would have a look further at it. Mm -hmm. And I looked at research, which there's not a lot. Um, so I looked at research and um, looked at uh, how um, interactions with trains, how working with trains, how mo right. train modelling might benefit people from a, a mental health perspective. But I also looked at um, a project called um, Men's Sheds, which is a um, community-based uh, uh, project for, for men where they all get together and they build things and make mm. things and use tools and all this kind of thing and share skills and ideas and issues, problems. Mm. Um, and so um, I'm currently looking at the rail nuts and what you do here right. to say um, what is the benefits, are there any benefits mm. to uh, to the members here, but then what is the impact of um, the making tracks when it's out in the community? And um, we've had, we've already got a, a potential case study where um, a group have then taken away the uh, the positive side of, of railway modelling. Right. And um, uh, for for. Um, uh, young people in respite and said how can that benefit them further and what are they getting for it so we're looking at that as a case study as well mm. yeah. but it's looking at not only what goes on with rail nuts and making tracks but the ripple effects of it right from a psychological and um, and actually from from the perspective of does it impact on the local economy all kinds of things mm. so that that's where I'm coming from speaking personally when I was at Chester Cathedral last year, um, there seemed to be, or I seemed to be exposed to say people who had, I don't know, autism. Yeah. And one of the things it's taught me is not to be afraid of them. Yes, yeah. So I learned to actually approach the people, uh, autistic people, possibly children with parents who would be quite protective of them initially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can remember one particular case. Um, I didn't mean to launch into a, an example, but why not? Yeah, yeah. Um, where there was a young lad, clearly autistic or off the spectrum, and his parents were with him. And I walked up to them and asked them if I minded giving him the controls. And they explained that he couldn't because, and I explained to them, he can, and there is no negative 
connotation to this. If he throws it across the room, that's my problem, not yeah. theirs. And so I put the controller in his hand and showed him what to do. And I think it was the happiest lad around the, uh, around the cathedral. And so it's not as much educating other people like that, but I was educated that yeah. Yeah. these are normal people yes. who just express themselves differently. Yeah. And once I'd broken the barrier down, and it was my barrier, I found myself going up to people with, you know, who are on some kind of spectrum or whatever, and actually trying to strike a conversation with them or the people that's with them. Yeah. And I am absolutely not afraid, not afraid of putting, controller, putting a controller in their hands and letting them play. Yeah. So it's taught me a lot. Yeah. So the, so the, the men's sheds right. are search, they, they might do little community projects. Like I say, I think there's one next to Halton Haven and they do some stuff for, for Halton Haven. But there is going to be, that the, they are a kind of a growing movement. And like you say, we know who WI is, but this started in the 90s and is only really starting to, to get going um, so much in, in the UK. So it's about 30 years old. Well, mm. surely pl places like that, they're not like not like us here. We can just turn up and do what we want and do, go that's, when we want. But, but that's the, the whole yeah. point. There's yeah. nobody running us. No, but but if you've got a place, somebody's in charge of it. That's the point. What? That's the point. Like, like, like minded people gathering yeah. around talking about stuff, and you might offload a particular problem that you, to a mate, you know, oh, Dave, we had a rotten day this day, and, and you might have a bit of advice or whatever, and then we carry on doing what we're doing. It's just, yeah. it's it's just a place for people, of like, like minded people, to gather and, and. Yeah, but we haven't got all the nonsense that goes with like uh, official organisations, have we? We haven't got all this health and safety. Yes, you know, we we can do what we're no, so of course we have. No, we you haven't, Dave, but him, him, and I have. We're all safeguarders. You're not, because you didn't go down it. But we are. Don't you feel safer now, Dave? Yeah. You're safe, Dave, because you're always... It's not changed my life one bit. It has, Dave, but you don't know about it. Because no, you come here and moan. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's I'm the I'm whole point. I'm all about, 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 about the way things are going. There you go. Because it's all good. It's all, <clears throat> it's all good banter. That's exactly but it, it might just be distraction, it might just be, it, it, like you say, That's it's just brilliant. somewhere to have banter. I mean, my husband's recently retired, and I think the one thing that he's missing more than anything is the fact that, that you know, he doesn't have anybody on a daily basis to have banter with and talk crap with. And, and that's the truth, once you retire, a lot, of, a lot of men, once they've retired and they've had a, a decent job, they'd suddenly get that day and then they've got nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've had no interest, other, they've had no hobbies in their life. Yeah. It's to but keep your brain going. Yes, yeah, mm. exactly. And and also all of the, oh. I mean, one Chris was was telling me that the number of um, miles you end up walking when you're doing making tracks and stuff like that. Well, you're actually increasing your physical exercise. Oh yeah. Without knowing it. You're, <laughs> you are. Only Chris is. Only Chris is. Yeah, only Chris. Chris. Yeah, yeah, only Chris. <laughs> Yeah, but you're, you're lifting things, yeah, but you're you, moving and, and, and the big fella. Big fella gets more exercise looking after the kids yeah. than he ever does. Look. <laughs> Where's Chris? If you just wait here, he'll be around in about five minutes, all right? It'll be a bit short. It'll be a bit short. And if you miss him that time, don't worry, he'll be around again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you're, you're lifting, you might be lifting pieces of wood, you're, you're building all of this. You're actually moving. And for people with so arthritis and things like that, you're, you're actually belt. keeping your joints moving. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, so there's, there, there's a, a massive the impact that you have yeah. without realising it. And it's <laughs> some of that that I'm going to try and capture for, it's not for me, it's for, for, for Pete and, and for the project. But we come back for more. Yes. Yes. You know. Yeah. The more difficult it is, the more we like it. <laughs> yeah. But there's also there's also um, <laughs> research evidence that supports the fact that that what you're doing, and particularly some of the complex issues that you deal with, to do with you know, it might be working out the size that you need to fit something and so on, actually has a um, positive impact in preventing you going towards or contributing to preventing um, the impact of dementia. 
Why is there so much dementia today? It's something in the food chain, it's got to be. Because people are living longer, Dave. No, it's got to do with... No, people live long... You you go down Chester Cathedral and look at some of them people in that churchyard that's been there hundreds of years. On and they live to 80 odd, so that's not... It's something in the modern food chain that's chemically altering the brain. Don't you think, and they won't have it. Modern science has just got a label for more things. Of course it has. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it has. No, they put you in a lunatic major. asylum years yeah. ago, didn't they? I was going to say, yeah. you say they are 86, but they, they were the minority. They might have been. They yeah. might have been the wealthy. Nineteen, you know. Yeah. Well, how, can I just ask how, the, how this communication started? I, I work for... Yeah. I'm the psychologist who I work at the Falconry and I run a little social enterprise. Oh, I see. Right. And um, so um, Steve. The Falconry at Blakeney. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. Steve, who owns the Falconry, he set up his Falconry because of this guy. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so you know, the relationship was there. Yeah, quite, well, quite regularly, at me, you know, today's work, we covered the spectrum of, of, of society. Well, uh, I'm I'm a that were leaders in their field, you know, like brain surgeons. And one of our members, who unfortunately just, just passed it. away, I didn't see was one of Britain's well, leading brain surgeons. Yeah. You know, so, but when he came here... This obviously a great level of... Yeah. 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 And when he came here, it was really unbelievable. Yeah. His man is doing brain surgery, right? Yeah. Yeah, Ian, he couldn't even have a bloody file. We had to teach him how to use a file. Yeah. He loved coming here, didn't he's he? He's drilling into people's heads, isn't he? Yeah, he's drilling into people's heads and we're teaching him how to put a track down, you know. And he built this amazing railway. You know. One thing I think it'd be useful for you to look at and eat is the comments we receive on Dave's YouTube videos and the Facebook. Yes, So yes. I'll, I'll send you all the, the links yes. and you can look at the comments because you know, some, some of them are quite humbling. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. We're chatting, sat, sat, chatting around the table, and the railway is completely incidental. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, it might as well not be here because yeah. we don't do any modelling at all. We're just talking. Yeah. And no subject is taboo, and we literally run the gamut of entire so we can go from one extreme to another, literally in the back of an eye sometimes. This paper's on a community-based mental health and suicide prevention interventions for men. Um, and the reason that I looked at this paper is because it, it looks at men's sheds within within this. But it also looks at football initiatives. There's a lot of football initiatives um, and so on. Um, but, but this is looking at things as um, a short-term intervention. So you might do it for a few months and then it's like, what else? Whereas men's sheds arguably is similar in some ways to, to what you do here um, in the, the longevity of it. But this, we're talking, you know, I, I was stunned when Chris and Pete told me it was 22 years because my initial, as I say, my initial thought is like you build a railway and I think I hadn't actually seen this at the time and I, I don't think you could build this in a week. Um, but it, it's one of those where where you know once you built a railway and you're driving it around a bit you know does it not get a bit boring you know but that from a, from a completely naive way of looking mm. at it and having seen it and listened and and um you know got some of the impact that it has on uh, the people who visit making tracks and that kind of thing you're thinking wow 